Hello everyone. I'm back with another chapter of Geography, Class 6, NCRT. Chapter 8, India, Climate, Vegetation and Wildlife. So from the heading itself, we know that in this chapter we are going to read about the climate, the vegetation and the wildlife of our country. So in the first page, we don't have much to read about except for the fact that how many major seasons are there in India. So we have winter, summer, rainy and autumn. Remember that. So the winter spans from December to February. The summer spans from March to May and rainy comes from June to September. And then the autumn comes from October to November. Understanding it this way will be very boring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you in a very easier manner as to how to remember which part of the country has what type of vegetation and climate because most of the questions in the examination comes from this part. So if you have a thorough understanding about the basics, answering those questions will be just a walk in the park. Cold weather season or winter. During the winter season, the sun rays do not fall directly in the region. As a result, the temperatures are quite low in northern India. So to make you understand this particular sentence in a much better manner, if you remember the picture, I'm just going to pop this picture up and try to recognize if you remember this picture. So the reason we end winter is in this picture. Have a look at this picture. Clearly you can see that during winter our earth is in such a position that it is slightly tilted upwards from uh, directly from the sun rays. As a result the sun rays do not fall on the equator and it falls on the southern hemisphere which is below the equator. Hence the northern hemisphere because India lies above the equator so it will witness winter. It will not face the sun rays directly. Hence winter is there in our country during that time. So that is the reason behind that. And the same can be guessed about the summer. So if you look at the summer side of our earth, the northern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun rays. Hence above the equator direct sunlight will fall and we have summer. And below the equator that is the southern hemisphere doesn't have sun rays directly and it will be a bit cold over there. So if there is a question, what is loo? Hot and dry winds are called loo. So in India, it's very common, a lot of loo during the summer season. So hot and dry winds are the cause behind it. So in page two, we'll read about southwest monsoon season or rainy season. This season is marked by the onset and advance of monsoon. The winds blow from Arabian Sea and Bay of Bengal. So the reason behind monsoon in India is because of the winds that come from south side, which is from the Arabian Sea that is southwest and Bay of Bengal which is southeast. Remember this, Kerala is the first state in, in our country to witness monsoon. So if it has started witnessing rain then we, we all are rest assured that there's rain going to come in the next few days. So it's a very cool phenomena. What happens is these winds when they come from Arabian Sea and Bay of Bengal they carry a lot of moisture because it's all over the ocean so it will carry a lot of moisture. Wind come from low pressure area to high pressure area. So oceans have low pressure as a result they move towards the landmass and when they come towards the landmass we have western ghats and eastern ghats they are they have this huge chain of mountains so when these winds strike the mountain barriers rainfall occurs and moisture is nothing but the amount of water vapor present in the air so these water particles when they get hit with mountains with solid rock solid mass they break these molecules break and hence rainfall occurs it's as simple as that so after the rainy season <coughs> comes the autumn. Autumn is nothing but off going of monsoon when monsoon leaves. So winds move back from the mainland to the Bay of Bengal. This is the season of retreating monsoon. The southern part of India, particularly Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh receive rainfall in this season. So these states are the only states which receive rainfall while going and rest other while coming. The climate of India has broadly been described as monsoon type. Monsoon is taken from the Arabic word mausam which means season. Due to India's location in the tropical region, most of the rain is brought by monsoon wind. So what do you mean by tropical region? Tropical region are those places that fall in between Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. Remember that. Coming to page 3. The climate of a place is affected by its location, altitude, distance from the sea and relief. So these are the four reasons which determine a climate of a place. And that is also the reason behind regional differences in the climate of India. For example, Jaisalmer and Bikaner, both of them are in Rajasthan, they are very hot. While Thras and Kargil in Jammu and Kashmir, they are freezing cold. And then we have coastal places like Mumbai and Kolkata, they experience moderate climate. They are not hot, nor they are cold, but they are very humid because of the moisture, humidity, as they are close to the oceans and sea. So this is a general knowledge question. Which state receives the highest rainfall? Meghalaya. 
So coming to the next topic, natural vegetation. What do you mean by vegetation? Plants are collectively known as vegetation. So whenever vegetation comes, think about the green plants. So here they have nicely defined the term natural vegetation as the grasses, shrubs and trees which grow on their own without interference or help from human being are called natural vegetation. So there are vast forests around the world which are not taken care of by human being. This huge forest, they grow on their own, right? But that is what is natural vegetation. So we're not talking about all those small gardens that we grow near our house because they are made by us, right? We plant them, we, we put seeds and etc. Uh, but we are talking about much larger forests around the world which grow on its own every year. That is called the natural vegetation. So different types of natural vegetation are dependent on different climatic conditions, which are true, right? Where there is more rainfall, uh, the vegetation is going to be thick and dense. And where there isn't much rainfall, it's going to be empty. There's not, there's not going to be much of vegetation. Due to varied climatic conditions, <clears throat> India has a wide range of natural vegetation. Vegetation of India can be divided into five types. So this is very important. Make a note of this. Tropical evergreen forest, tropical deciduous forest, thorny bushes, mountain vegetation, and mangrove forests. So if we understand these five terms, we can easily answer a lot of MCQ question during exams because these are the basics. These are the basics of vegetation and there will be plenty of questions based on biodiversity. And if we understand these five topics well, we can nail them. So the first one is tropical rainforest. So have a look at this picture. Try to break that word tropical rainforest and understand that. Tropical, it means any place that is between Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. Rain means receiving heavy rainfall and forest is dense vegetation. So that's how you got to remember what is tropical rainforest. Some important trees that are found in these forests are Mahogany, Ebony and Rosewood. Andaman and Nicobar Islands part of northeastern states and a narrow strip of the western slope of the western Ghats are home of these forests. Have a look at this map. I'm just gonna pinpoint everything and it will be easy for you to understand. Coming to the next type of forest, it's tropical deciduous forest. Again, let's try to break it down and understand. So if we have to understand only the meaning of deciduous because tropical and forest, we know the meaning of it from the previous slide. Uh, the meaning of deciduous is nothing but trees or shrub that lose their leaves. So we are talking about the trees which lose their leaves. So the important trees that are found in tropical deciduous forests are sal, teak, people, neem and sesham. They are found in Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, Orisha and in part of Maharashtra. The next type of vegetation is thorny bushes. This type of vegetation is found in dry areas of the country. Dry areas. The leaves are in the form of spines to reduce the loss of water. Cactus, Kher, Babul, Kikar are important and are found in the states of Rajasthan, Punjab, Haryana, Eastern Slopes of Western Ghats and Gujarat. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pinpoint everything of it on a map. I'm going to put a link of that page where the map are, maps are going to be available that I put on this video and you can go ahead and download it and take a printout and keep it handy for learning purpose. The next type of vegetation is the mountain vegetation. By the name it is pretty evident that the type of plants or shrubs or trees live in mountain. We are talking about that kind of vegetation. A wide range of species is found in the mountains according to the variation in height. With increase in height, the temperature falls. At a height between 1500 and 2500 meters, most of the trees are conical in shape. Have a look at this picture. You will understand what kind of conical shape we are talking about. These trees are called coniferous trees. So conical in shape and coniferous. You can see the resemblance. Coni and coni. So conical which is in the shape of cone. Chair, pine and deodar are important trees of these forests. And the last type of vegetation is the mangrove forest. These forests can survive in saline water. What do you mean by saline water? Saline water is nothing but salty water. And what is the meaning of mangrove? They are nothing but those trees or shrub that are grown in saline water. Have a look at this picture and understand what I'm trying to say. And if you want to understand it even better, try watching this clip. I can steer this raft, but I can't fight the current. If I'm not careful, I could be carried straight out into the Pacific. And that is what is mangroves. They are usually found in Panama, Vietnam, Philippines, near the coastal area. And the most important role of mangroves is that they protect the coastlines from wave action because they hold the soil together. Now let's quickly read why are forests necessary. Forests are very useful for us. They perform various functions. Plants release oxygen that we breathe and absorb carbon dioxide. 
the roots of the plant bind the soil thus they control soil erosion forests provide us with timber for furniture fuel wood fodder medicinal plants and herbs honey gum etc forests are the natural habitat of wildlife natural vegetation has been destroyed to a large extent because of the reckless cutting of trees and have a look at this picture you will see a wonderful cycle of uh, what we get from forest and why are they useful so let's quickly move on to the next page let's talk about wildlife uh, forests are home to a variety of wildlife there are thousands of species of animals and a large variety of reptiles amphibians mammals birds insects and worms which dwell in the forest so tiger is a national animal then gir forest is in gujarat which consists of lions elephants and one horned rhinoceros roam in the forests of assam so rhinoceros are in assam elephants are also found in kerala and karnataka camels are found in uh, desert or gujarat wild goats snow leopards bears etc are found in himalayan region besides these many other animals are found in our country such as monkey wolf jackal nilgai cheetal etc now coming to the bird so the national bird is peacock other common birds are parrot pigeon myna geese bulbul and ducks there are several bird sanctuaries which have been created to give birds their natural habitat these provide the birds protection from hunters Now there are several hundreds of species of snakes found in India. We have cobras and crates are important among them. Due to cutting of forests and hunting, several species of wildlife of wildlife of India are declining rapidly. So you can see the consequences of cutting down of forests. In order to protect them, very in order to protect them, many national park sanctuaries and biosphere reserves have been set up. The government has also started Project Tiger and Project Elephant. So they are basically talking about all the projects that have been started, but nothing in depth. I think class six is too early to read about all the initiatives about government etc. So as we read more and more about geography we'll get to know we'll go in depth of these initiatives and uh, government plans so with this we have come to an end of the final chapter of geography class 6 ncert so let's answer some questions first question which winds bring rainfall in india why is it so important so the first part of it is south western wind so remember we said the wind that comes from southwest that is arabian sea and kerala is the first state to witness rainfall so southwest is the answer why is it so important so you can go on to uh, write the answer as to why rainfall is important to india because of rainfall we have uh, good agriculture good uh, irrigation and it is important for our forests to uh, develop and give food important from vegetation point of view that's it second question name the different seasons in india so we have four different official seasons in india that is monsoon autumn winter and summer what is natural vegetation so natural vegetation is nothing but the forest the forest in our country all the green plants and um, shrubs roots etc trees that are grown that that all falls under natural vegetation fourth question name the different types of vegetation found in india so we have let's let's just say whatever randomly comes in amount one is tropical rainforest then we have tropical deciduous forest then we have mangroves and then we have mountain vegetation and then we have thorny bushes what is the difference between evergreen forest and deciduous so remember this evergreen forest is nothing but tropical rainforest so evergreen forest are forever green because they receive heavy rainfall and deciduous forest are those forests that consist of trees that shed their leaves at at some point of of the year that is the huge difference between them why is tropical rainforest so called evergreen forest because they receive heavy rainfall and they are in the tropical area tropical area is nothing but the places that lie between tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn take the correct answer the world's highest rainfall occurs in its meghalaya but i think mosindram falls in meghalaya mangrove forest can thrive in saline water mahogany and rosewood trees are found in tropical evergreen forest so rosewood is a very famous wood Uh, used for furniture and cupboard and it's very expensive so these woods they have a lot of moisture so moisture will only be there where there is heavy rainfall and rainfall comes in evergreen not deciduous so tropical evergreen forest wild goats and snow leopards are found in himalayan region during the southwest monsoon period the moisture laden winds blow from its sea to land why because in the ocean and there is low pressure and low pressure from low pressure the wind moves towards high pressure and high pressure is towards the ground land mass so it's sea to land and these water molecules contained in the moisture they go and hit the mountains of western ghats and eastern ghats and break into a uh, monsoon 
that is water particles and thus monsoon comes so this is how you can easily get a little bit of information from here and there combined together and get an answer so this is how we build a knowledge base and try to give answers to as many questions as possible in the exams if you like the video consider giving it a thumbs up and leave a comment below and make sure you're subscribed you'll get an alert when my next video comes or if you want me to make anything specific do let me know that's it from me now and i will see you in the next series cheers